Hi everyone, uh, thanks for the opportunity to be here today. Um, I've been working in the new GTLD, GTLD space since 2000 uh, when uh, our company, New Star, applied for .biz and we've been in the registry for over a decade uh, now in the registry business. We also operate the registry for .us under a contract with the Department of Commerce and we're the back-end registry for uh, Dot .tel, dot .travel, uh, and most recently .co. Um, we've, we've also announced a number of agreements under which we'll be operating the registry for, for applicants who plan to apply to, to ICANN. So while, while we get the slides up, let me just tell you a little bit about uh, my company, Newstar. Um, we're, we're a publicly traded company. We're listed on the New York Stock Exchange. We're uh, half a billion in revenue. Last year, we, we have over a thousand employees, um, and we provide a number of services, including running the number portability database for all the telecom carriers in North America. We run the common short code registry, and uh, we have we're the world's largest provider of enterprise uh, DNS services. And uh, we're here today primarily, of course, to talk about our, our registry business. So the, here are some of our customers. Some of the, the largest uh, internet companies in the world rely upon us for their, their DNS today. Uh, names that are familiar in household words to, to all of us. Uh, they depend on us to keep their DNS up and, up and running because the DNS is our cash register. If the DNS stops working, their site stops resolving, and the money stops flowing in. So it's a very mission critical function, and we're, we're entrusted by these companies to, to run their, their DNS. Uh, we have partnerships with uh, a network of over 300 registrars located throughout the world in every region of the world. That's important to new GTLD applicants because distribution, especially for keyword generic TLDs, is, is very important. And the registrar generally will like to work with a registry they're already connected to, whose procedures they're already familiar with, um, who already have uh, accounts set up for billing and, and reporting and things of that nature. So. Now, as you look for registry providers, one thing to consider is the connectivity that registry provider has to the registrar community around the world. That's especially uh, important to generic keyword TLDs and city TLDs. Um, next slide. So these are the these are the TLDs we we currently operate. Um, I, I described them a, a moment ago. Let me let me focus on .co, which is the the TLD we, we most recently launched. Um, .co launched less than a year ago. Uh, it's been rebranded. It was you know, the country code for, and still is the country code, code for Columbia. It's being marketed as a company. Um, and it's seen great success. Many in the industry point to .co as the model for launching a, a new GTLD. Uh, the execution by our partner, Co Internet, is it, on the marketing side has been by many accounts, flawless, uh, and the, the volume is over a million and continues to continues to grow. Um, you know what you see here is experience. I mean, as you look for registry operators to support your GTLDs, uh, and and others have said this earlier in our session, experience is very important. And our company has launched more new TLDs. For, through every phase of launch than any other registry in the world. Um, what I mean by all of the phases is there's, of course, the sunrise phase, where trademark owners have an opportunity to register their names first. There's something called land rush, which is the first opportunity for uh, registrants to come in and express interest in a particular name. And then there's open registration and ongoing operations. Well, we've done that for .biz, we've done that for .us, we did that with .co. We've done that for .travel, and we did that for .tel. No other registry in the world has brought a new TLD to market through all of those phases. So we're very proud of that. And the other aspect of experience, of course, is the ICANN application requires very detailed technical answers to the, to the questions. We've already written all of the answers to the questions in the guidebook. Um, we operate a registry today under a contract with ICANN. Uh, 
we are confident we can meet all of the requirements of the guidebook. So there's no risk in using New Star as your registry back end and launching your new TLD. We know we'll pass the evaluation. Next slide. So here's a, a, a timeline, a, a simplified timeline. You saw the more complex chart earlier today. But this generally just talks about the, the, the major milestones in using new GTLDs. So that the one we're, we're all uh, anxiously waiting for is, is the January 12th date when ICANN will open up applications for new GTLDs. For 90 days, ICANN will accept applications and then the application window will close. Um, and then they'll begin their evaluation process. Um, after the initial va evaluation, all of the applications will be unveiled. At that point, the entire world will see who applied for what GTLD is. I think that'll, that'll be pretty exciting and, and maybe there'll be some surprises in there uh, as well. The, the entire process, the evaluation process, uh, takes a total of nine months from the beginning of the, the evaluation to actual delegation and contracting of the TLD at a minimum. Um, and what I mean at a minimum is that's for a very simple TLD application. And simple is defined as an application for which there's only one applicant, uh, for which there are no objections, uh, and, and uh, no extended evaluation. So that's at the very shortest, once the evaluation process begins, you're looking at nine months. The very earliest the new GTLD will come to market would be in the first quarter of 2013. Um, the TLDs that are likely to be in that first batch will be cities because only, you know, in a lot of cases, a city will apply itself. In that case, they're the only applicant. Um, brands, because they have trademarks, especially brands with very unique names, will be amongst the first that they get approved. That doesn't mean they'll launch their new TLD right away, but they'll, they'll be approved and be delegated to the root uh, early on. And then smaller niche TLDs for which there's only one applicant. Um, so there's no contention, there's no need for negotiation, there's no auction. Those will be amongst the first that come to market in the first half of, of 2013. Uh, next slide. So here, here are just some examples of generic keyword TLDs, um, city TLDs, uh, the city of New York has announced it's applying. Paris, there'll be a dot Paris, there'll be a dot Berlin. Uh, dot Tokyo, uh, Tokyo recently announced they, they issued an RFP. They'll be looking for registry uh, provider as well. Um, and then you see some examples of what I think are some very compelling GTLDs. You know, if, if I'm a lawyer, for example, uh, and I'm registering a domain name, and I can't find my .com where I just prefer legal branding. I mean, dot .law stands out and says, this is for you. I mean, personally, if I was an attorney, there's no way I would not have a dot .law. Every law student should get the, a dot .law. So those are, those are the kind of compelling new GTLDs that are, that are potentially coming to market. There'll be multiple applications for TLDs like dot .law and many of the others you can see up here. We, we've already announced that we're working with several parties who plan to apply. Uh, you heard Annalisa talk a little while ago about Dot .green. Uh, we're very proud to be uh, their back-end registry provider for their application. Um, dot .site, which is uh, an application being filed by a company called Urban Brain in, in Japan. And you heard Scott Sykes talk earlier about Dot .gay, the community TLD, will be operating the registry technology services for that. GTLD as, as well. Uh, next slide. So here are, here are some reasons, and I'll, I'll go through this quickly because I know we're time constrained, but here are some reasons why brands should think about getting their TLD if they're not already thinking about it. Number one is it's the shortest, you get the shortest domain name possible. Some, somebody mentioned this earlier, www.brand. Um, so shorter, memorable, more memorable is generally better when it comes to domain names. So better than www.company.gtld forward slash something is just something.brand. 
Um, it's easier for consumers to remember. They retain it faster. Fewer impressions are required, and your return on investment is better from an advertising perspective. Complete flexibility to the left of the dot. Right? So no longer does a company have to search for an available domain name for a new tagline or a new product or if they're launching a new, new, new initiative of some kind. Everything's available, and it's, and it's all for them. So they, they get a tremendous amount of flexibility and, and availability. Um, you know, from a, uh, an end user perspective, in terms of direct navigation, it can be very user friendly. So if I know, for example, that, uh, you know, if, if I'm Nike and I want to, I want to promote soccer, my soccer line, right? Soccer.Nike. And if I'm a soccer fan, I'm a soccer enthusiast, and we go to not Nike, over time, users will learn if I want to go to Nike Soccer, I go so soccer.nike. Uh, from an SEO perspective, uh, and this is a bit of speculation on my part, but if you consider that the search engines ultimately want to deliver to the user the best, most relevant uh, content they, they can provide, you, you would think that if somebody types in soccer Nike, they're, they're not going to show uh, you know, some apparel distributor somewhere that carries Nike merchandise, they're going to rank soccer.nike higher. Of course, uh, nike.com is already at the top of the page for, for if you search on Nike, right? But not for every keyword combination with the word Nike. There are thousands and thousands, maybe millions, of results that you, you might see. And, and the actual Nike site might even be buried somewhere in those results. So <coughs> the, my theory, uh, and it's based, I think, on you know what search engines are trying to do, is that new TLDs will improve SEO for, for brands. And then there's the, you know, the consumer trust element, which has been mentioned earlier today. The consumer can trust that if they're at a .Nike site, this is a .Nike site, where if Nike decides to give that Nike domains to their authorized distributors that they're not buying counterfeit Nike merchandise. So if I go to buy Nike merchandise and uh, you know Ken Sportswear Nike is where I go, I know that Nike has authorized them to distribute the product and they're not selling counterfeit goods. So there, there are a lot of I think very compelling reasons why a brand, and this is only a partial list why brands should seriously consider registering their, their TLD. Okay. So, um, you know, recently we, we made an announcement about something we call brand assurance because I've been out talking to brands for two years now about UG TLDs. And um, you know, only now, in the last couple of months, are the marketing people starting to show up at the meetings. And they're asking very good questions, but they're trying to figure out, well, what do I do with this? How will I use it? How does it fit into my branding strategy? What initial steps will I take to migrate from my .com or my current GTLD to, to my .brand? Um, but they're, they're unsure, and they're unsure about the timing. So they, the expense is, of course, considerable. So we wanted to provide a way for them to secure their brand at very low cost until they decide what they want to do with it. So we, we announced brand assurance, and brand assurance enables a brand to apply for their, their TLD. Of course, all the ICANN fees apply. We can't change those. But our registry services fees are, are only $10,000 a year uh, for, the, for the brand to secure their name. For that, they get... Um, to meet all of the ICANN requirements, and they get the domain names that ICANN requires, things like whois.brand and nick.brand. So they don't get any domain names that they would actually market, um, but they've got their TLD, and when they're ready to use it, we have a brand advantage program, and they can convert at any time during the term to the brand advantage program. Yes, the price goes up, but they're paying this very low cost until they decide to what they want to do if they decide to do something. If not, we we'll continue at the $10,000 price for the term of the agreement. So we're pretty excited about that. It's got a, a great welcome in the marketplace. And one other, uh, next slide. So we're eating our own cookie. We're the, we're the only 
registry that's announced that we will be applying for our own brand TLD. So New Star will apply for dot New Star. We haven't provided any details of what we will actually do with that new star, but we have plans and we're excited about them. Um, we're looking forward to, to bringing this to market. So you heard this advice earlier today that the clock is ticking, the application deadline is getting very close. If you're not engaged with registries, if you haven't engaged experts who can help you through the process, now is the time to do it. Uh, when it comes to registries, look for those with experience bringing TLDs to market through all of the phases of, of launch. Um, and most importantly, ask to talk to each of the customers they currently provide registry services to. So you can talk to .co, you can talk to .tel, you can talk to .travel, you can talk to their CEOs, and they'll, they'll tell you about Ustar, and I'm confident you'll get very good feedback. You should do that with every one of the registries you are working with or considering working with. So thanks, I'm sorry for thanks, running Ted. over a little bit. Hope that was helpful. Thank <laughs> you.